and in all 50 states. The American people are worried about COVID. We are all worried about COVID. We are all tired with COVID. But the American people are worried about much more. They are worried about inflation, the price of food and gas and other products going up. They are worried about climate change and whether or not the planet that they will be leaving their kids and grandchildren will be healthy and habitable. They are worried about a middle class whose real inflation accounted for wages have not risen in almost 50 years, have been stagnant. And the reality that today half of our workforce is living paycheck to paycheck. The American people are worried about the massive level of income and wealth inequality, which we are experiencing, in which during this pandemic alone, just the last few years, the billionaire class saw an increase in their wealth by some $2 trillion, while at the same time, thousands of workers died as they went to their jobs. They didn't have a choice about it. They went to work and they died. The American people are worried that their kids are not getting the quality childcare that they need or that the family can afford. They are worried about the outrageous levels of student debt that their kids acquired because they chose to get a higher education. And above all else, Madam President, the American people, in my view, are outraged that in the midst of all of these crises and more, their elected officials are simply not responding. <clears throat> in my view, now is the time to tell the American people that we in Congress do understand their pain. We do know what they are going through. And that we are prepared to stand up for the working families of this country and take on the greed of powerful special interests who wield so much influence over the economic and political life of our nation. <clears throat> and today, Senator Klobuchar and I are going to focus on one, just one, of the many issues that this Congress must address. The American people want action, and that is what we have got to give them. We have got to respond to the crises. And today, Madam President, we're going to be talking about prescription drugs. For decades, literally decades, 20, 30, 40 years, members of both political parties have come to the floor of the Senate, come to the floor of the House, and they have bemoaned the high cost of prescription drugs in this country. And they promised the American people that they would lower those outrageous prices. Republicans have come to the floor, Democrats have come to the floor, and speech after speech has been made. And not only speeches, members of both political parties have put 30-second ads on television when they ran for office, hey, vote for me. I'm going to lower the cost of prescription drugs. So for decades now, Members of Congress have been talking about lowering the cost of pres prescription drugs, and for decades, they have failed to deliver. Talk, 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 nothing happens. The cost of prescription drugs goes up. Congress has failed to deliver under Democratic leadership, 
It has failed to deliver on the Republican leadership, failed to deliver on the Democratic presidents, failed to deliver on the Republican presidents. We have failed to deliver because of the greed of the pharmaceutical industry, which today is likely the most powerful corporate interests in America and is certainly the dominant political force here in Washington, D.C. So I ask my fellow Americans today, do you want to know why you are paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs? Simple question. Why is it that we are paying, in some cases, 10 times more for the same exact prescription drugs that are sold in Canada or in Europe? Do you want to know why one out of four Americans, this is really quite crazy, that in the midst of a dysfunctional healthcare system, we have one out of four Americans who cannot afford to fill the prescriptions that their doctors write. Think about that for one half a second. People are sick, they go to the doctor. Doctor makes, writes out a prescription. People can't afford to fill it. They end up in the emergency room, they end up in the hospital. They get sicker because they simply cannot afford the outrageous cost of medicine. <clears throat> Do you know why millions of diabetic Americans actually ration their insulin? I have talked to diabetics and parents of diabetics where their kids get sick because they cannot afford the cost of insulin. Now, obviously, diabetes today is a terrible, terrible illness impacting many millions of Americans. Well, let me tell you why we pay the highest prices in the world, why people in America die because they can't afford prescription drugs. And the answer has everything to do with a corrupt political system in which over the past 20 years, the pharmaceutical industry has spent over four and a half billion, not million, four and a half billion dollars on lobbying and hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions. Yes, you heard that correctly. Four and a half billion dollars over 20 years on lobbying and God knows how many hundreds of millions of dollars on campaign contributions. These are campaign contributions which go to Republicans these are campaign contributions that go to Democrats, and I am talking about many hundreds of members of the House and Senate who receive funding from the pharmaceutical industry. Further, the pharmaceutical industry has, over the years, mounted an unprecedented lobbying effort in Washington, here in the nation's capital, and in states all over the country. And I hope everybody hears this, because this is what power is about. This is why you pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Last year alone, the pharmaceutical industry hired more than 1,700 well-paid lobbyists to come to Capitol Hill to protect their interests, including the former congressional leaders of both major political parties. Got that? 1,700 well-paid lobbyists protecting the interests of the pharmaceutical industry. Get out your calculator, because what that amounts to is three pharmaceutical industry lobbyists for every member of Congress. 435 members in the House, 100 in the Senate, 1,700 well-paid lobbyists, making sure that you pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. And what is the result of all of that lobbying and all of those campaign contributions? Well, I think the American people know it every time they walk into a drugstore. The pharmaceutical industry uniquely in the entire world 
is able to raise their prices any time they want to any level that they want. How many people out there walked into a drugstore, ordered their prescription, refilled their prescription? Pharmacists as well, I'm sorry to tell you, cost of your medicine has gone up 20%. Why? Because they can. They can do anything they want. Want to double prices, triple prices? There is no law stopping them. And that's what you get when you spend billions of dollars on lobbyists and campaign contributions. You get what you pay for, and they have gotten what they paid for. Madam President, not only do we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, but the result of that is the pharmaceutical industry, year after year, makes huge profits. Eight of the largest drug companies in America last year, in 2020, eight of the largest drug companies in the United States in 2020 made nearly $50 billion in profits while the CEOs of those pharmaceutical companies took home over $350 million in total compensation. Eight companies, $350 million in compensation for the CEOs of those companies. $50 billion in profits in the last year we have information. So let's be very clear. The overriding motivation of the pharmaceutical industry is greed. Their overriding goal is to make as much money as they can by squeezing as much as they can get from the sick, from the elderly, and from the desperate. I could give you many, many examples of the outrageous greed of the pharmaceutical industry, and I'm not even going to talk about the opiate, opiate crisis, which has killed hundreds of thousands of Americans. Not even go there today. But let me just mention that just a few years ago, the former CEO of a drug company called Gilead became a billionaire by charging $1,000 for the hepatitis drug Sovaldi became a billionaire. Interestingly enough, that drug was developed by taxpayer dollars through the Veterans Administration. And while they charge $1,000 a treatment here in the United States, turns out that it costs a dollar to manufacture and can be purchased in India for all of $4. 1000 bucks here, $4 in India. In 2016, the chairman of Mylon, received a $164 million compensation package after his company jacked up the price of EpiPen. You all remember EpiPen? By 550% over a nine-year period. Madam President, all over this country, the American people are asking a simple question. How many people in our country need to die? How many people need to get unnecessarily sicker? before Congress is prepared to take on the greed and power of the pharmaceutical industry. Enough is enough. A life-saving prescription drug does not mean anything if you cannot afford that drug. You got great drugs out there. What does it mean if you can't afford that drug? Or if you're going to go bankrupt because you have to buy it for a family member. Madam President, we cannot allow the pharmaceutical industry to charge the American people by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. And that is why I have introduced today, along with Senator Klobuchar, legislation that would cut the cost of prescription drugs under Medicare in half, not by 10 percent, not 30 percent, cut the cost of prescription drugs under Medicare in half. And it would do that by making sure that Medicare pays the same low prices for prescription drugs as the Veterans Administration does. Madam President, why is it that the VA pays so much less for prescription drugs than Medicare? And the answer is pretty simple. While the VA has been able to negotiate with the pharmaceutical industry for the past 30 years, Congress banned Medicare 
by law from doing anything to lower prescription drug prices. And the result is that, according to the nonpartisan Government Accountability Office, Medicare pays twice as much for the exact same prescription drugs as the VA. All right, you talk about dysfunctionality, you talk about crazy, you got two branches of government. VA pays X, Medicare pays 2X. How in God's name does that make sense to anybody other than the pharmaceutical industry? This is totally absurd, and if the VA can negotiate with the drug companies, so can Medicare. And by the way, for all of the great deficit hawks here who stay up nights worrying about the deficit, let me tell you that when we do that, we will save Medicare some $900 billion over the next decade. So i like to see where the deficit hawks are on this issue. $900 billion, 10 years, that's real money. And Madam President, the VA obviously is not the only agency that negotiates for lower drug prices. That is something that takes place in every other major country on Earth. Madam President, there is no rational reason for the pharmaceutical industry to charge the American people $98.70 for a standard unit of insulin that can be purchased in the UK for just $7.52, and on and on it goes. The American people are being played for suckers. They have bought the United States Congress, and it is time now for Congress to stand up to these people. And Madam President, uh, with that, uh, I would mention that what we are talking about, what Senator Klobuchar and I are talking about, is not some radical far-left idea. See, I get that. I don't know that Senator Klobuchar gets that. But it is not some radical far-left idea. It's a fairly popular idea. According to an October 2021 poll by the Kaiser Family Foundation, 83% of the American people want Medicare to negotiate with the pharmaceutical industry to lower the cost of prescription drugs. And poll after poll shows the same thing. Maybe, just maybe, you ready for a radical idea, Madam President? Maybe, just maybe, instead of doing the work of the lobbyists and the pharmaceutical industry, we might just want to represent the American people. And with that, let me yield to Senator Klobuchar. Uh, thank you, Senator Sanders. Madam President, um, I think you know Senator Sanders and I have debated a number of issues before. But from the beginning, we have been strongly united on one thing, and that is bringing down costs for the American people. And that is, as he just said, not one bit radical. We have joined together to introduce the Cutting Medicare Prescription Drug Prices in Half Act because that's what we should be doing. America pays more. The people of this country pay more for their prescription drugs than any other country in the world. How can that be, as Senator Sanders has noted, when it is our country, our taxpayers, that are investing in all this research? How can we come up short when it comes to what our people are paying for drugs? The examples, in the past five years, the cost of Lyrica, a drug that you see advertised on TV, millions of dollars in ads, a drug that treats nerve pain, or Symbicor, an asthma medication, increased almost 50%. Result of these kinds of increases, nearly 20% of older adults have reported not taking their medicines as prescribed because of the cost. Last month alone, Madam President, drug companies hiked the price of 742 drugs in America. What do we do? We sit. We sit, we talk about it, and we're not taking action. That is why Senator Sanders and I are putting our bill in today. We would love to spend the week debating it. We would like to move to this bill so we can get this done. We know that prescription drug prices in the United States are more than 250% higher than other industrialized nations. What is our simple solution? The VA, the US Department of Veterans Affairs, that we empower with the lives of our veterans and their health care. They negotiate the prices of the drugs they purchase and dispense for our nation's veterans. 
One report that found that the VA price is often half as much as what Medicare pays. Why? It's simple. The VA negotiates for prices, Medicare doesn't. And I kind of think, and Senator Sanders and I know this well, that 46 million seniors in America could get a pretty good deal if you allowed the government to negotiate on their behalf. A good deal for the taxpayers of this country, for people that care about deficits, for people that care about the bottom line budget, and a good deal for customers. And guess what? It wouldn't just help seniors because that is such a large block of customers in this country that it would bring down the drug costs for everyone. The stories in my state, people like Claire from St. Paul, when the cost of the prescription drug she relied on to manage her rheumatoid arthritis jumped from $60 per month to $1,400 per month. She could no longer afford it. In her words, her arthritis became so bad that she could barely handle a fork and a knife. Or the young man who was a manager of a restaurant, full-time job when he aged off his parents' insurance, what happened to him, and you know this story, Madam President, he started to ration his insulin, he had severe diabetes, and he died. And his mother has made her life about getting better drug prices. And Senator Sanders and I believe you start with the biggest buying block, you start with seniors, you get that negotiation going, and it will make a big difference. For people who believe in free markets and negotiation and competition, I don't know how you can say no to this proposal. It is time to allow this to be debated, to move forward with this bill. Let's get it on the floor and call it up for a vote. Thank you, Senator Sanders. Thank you, Senator Klobuchar. Said it all. I know you're spending the week dealing with assistant secretaries or something or another, and that's all terribly important, but the American people want us to start acting on their needs. And at the top of the list, the Senator Klobuchar just said, and what she said about folks in Minnesota, exactly the same. Hear the same stories in Vermont. People dying, get sick because they can't afford prescription drugs. So I think, and I say to my Republican friend, the time is now to have that debate. You want to vote against this bill? Hey, that's your right. You go home and explain it to the people. It's what democracy is. Some of us still believe in democracy, by the way. So I would say that, uh, Madam President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that at a time to be determined today by the majority leader, following consultation of the Republican leader, the Senate proceed to the consideration of S3615, which was introduced earlier today, that there be two hours for debate equally divided, that upon the use or yielding back of time, the bill be read a third time, and the Senate vote on passage of the bill without intervening action or debate. Is there objection? Madam President, reserving the right to object. The Senator from Idaho. Thank you, Madam President. Our nation's seniors deserve meaningful solutions that increase prescription drug access and affordability. This bill, unfortunately, would double down on the deepest flaws in our current health care system and usher in a host of new problems from fewer treatments to more bureaucracy. And yes, it's almost certain under this legislation we would see launch prices